Hello and welcome to the program. Aerobic ATP production is important for on-court tennis performance and hence understanding how the body converts foods into energy aerobically is important. Did you know that the aerobic energy system only converts approximately 34% of the potential energy from foods into biologically usable energy? In today's episode, I will explain how aerobic ATP production occurs and how efficient the energy system works. You will learn about first where aerobic ATP production occurs, second how it occurs, and third how efficient the system can convert energy aerobically. Aerobic ATP production, which occurs predominantly during prolonged low to moderate intensity exercise is the oxidation or breakdown of glucose or glycogen called glycolysis. Lipids called lipolysis and proteins called proteolysis into acetyl coenzyme A which enters the Krebs cycle where hydrogen removal occurs and the electron transport chain inside the mitochondria of the muscle cell provides the energy for aerobic ATP production. Aerobic ATP production predominantly provides energy for low to medium intensity activities lasting 90 seconds or more. It provides a net gain of 32 molecules of ATP and water. Next, we will examine aerobic glycolysis, lipolysis and proteolysis in more detail. During aerobic glycolysis, when oxygen is available to accept and transport hydrogen ions, pyruvic acid in the sarcoplasm is broken down to acetyl coenzyme A which enters the Krebs cycle and the formation of NAD and FAD occurs. The Krebs cycle is called after Sir Hans Adolf Krebs, a German-born British physician and biochemist. Its primary purpose is the oxidation or removal of hydrogen, of carbohydrates, lipids and proteins using coenzymes NAD and FAD as hydrogen carriers. In the Krebs cycle, NAD and FAD accept hydrogen and transport hydrogen in its reduced form to the electron transport chain in the mitochondria of the cell where NADH and FADH donate the hydrogen which reforms NADH and FADH to NAD or and FAD, thereby providing energy through the breakdown of the hydrogen bonds via oxidation to combine ADP and an inorganic phosphate to form ATP before the hydrogen is then picked up by oxygen to form water. This process of aerobic ATP production via the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain is called oxidative phosphorylation. During lipolysis, triglycerides are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids can be further converted into acetyl coenzyme A via a series of reactions called beta oxidation and acetyl coenzyme A can enter the Krebs cycle. The glycerol portion of lipolysis is not a direct form of energy because glycerol cannot effectively be converted by skeletal muscle cells but the liver uses the glycerol to synthesize glucose which of course yields energy. During beta oxidation, the mitochondria fatty acids are oxidized, thereby forming acetyl coenzyme A, which can enter the Krebs cycle. The enzymes that control lipolysis are called lipases. During proteolysis, proteins are broken down into amino acids. 
What happens after that depends on the particular amino acid. It can be converted into glucose, pyruvic acid, acetyl coenzyme A and other Krebs cycle intermediaries. The aerobic energy system only has a 35% efficiency rate in converting energy from foods into biologically usable energy. 66% are wasted in the form of heat. This can be calculated by comparing how much potential energy one mole of glucose yields during the aerobic metabolism with how much potential energy one mole of glucose yields when properly oxidized. Now, during aerobic metabolism, one glucose molecule yields a net gain of 32 ATP molecules and one ATP molecule contains 7.3 kcal of potential energy. Therefore, the total potential energy of one mole of glucose converted during aerobic metabolism is 233.6 kcal, 32 ATP times 7.3 kcal of ATP equals 233.6 kcalories. On the other hand, when one mole of glucose is properly oxidized, it yields 688 kcalories of potential energy. Therefore, the efficiency ratio of aerobic metabolism can be calculated by taking the total of 233.6 kcalories of potential energy from oxidative phosphorylation and divide that by 688 kcalories of potential energy from proper glucose oxidation, which yields 33.9%. This means that only approximately 34% of the potential energy from proper glucose oxidation can be transferred into biologically usable energy via oxidative phosphorylation, which means that the aerobic energy system can provide a maximum of 32 ATP, which then can be used for mechanical activity. 66% is lost as heat. This describes the loss of energy due to the energy transferring process, which refers to the second law of thermodynamics. Well, that's it again for today's episode. As usual, opinions differ. What's your point of view? Let us know below in the comment section. A brand new episode will be available next Sunday. So make sure you don't miss it and subscribe. In the meantime, I recommend you watch some of the previous episodes. You should really watch them all. If you like what you saw, tell your friends. I'm sure they will appreciate it. I'm Philipp Halfmann. Thank you for watching and Auf Wiedersehen! Tennis Conditioning TV episodes are licensed under Creative Commons. You are welcome to link or embed these videos, forward them to others and share these ideas with people you know. Brought to you by Advanced Concepts of Strength and Conditioning for Tennis. Available at TennisConditioningBook.com Music by Dan O at DanOSongs.com